I'll start. Thank you, Sophia. So we're ready. Ready to go. Okay, this is part two. This and we're today we're not going to get you up to speed on how to project plan, how to plan, how to pull things together. We're going to give you some exposure to it. The whole notion being is we have some tools that are available to us. We have other tools that you may want to consider, but you need to start someplace. So we're going to give you, in essence, three very big. <coughs> I'm going to give you one that is going to be using Microsoft Planner. It is in both my Plymouth and on Teams. It, it there they might it might be termed something different now, depending depending when you loaded things. But very briefly show how simple this is. Just using some slides. I'm not going to go in the software, but I have taken screen snapshots of the software and to move us there. So obviously we all start with some sort of a desired outcome, right? In this case, this is an example of a course that we're looking to create and move through the process. As we know, there's, it's a very defined process. It lends itself well to project planning, but there's lots of people, lots of moving parts involved. And here's an opportunity for us to think about how this works. So we have this desired outcome. In our case, we go into Microsoft Planner, it's tiles in my planet, and again, it's in Teams. We want to think in terms of this is the opening screen and we're going to create a new plan. This one is called, this is a new plan. All right. How incredibly creative is that, right? This is a new plan. And so with that, the, the Microsoft planner guides us through step by step. And if you sort of move around, move your cursor around, it's pretty easy to get there. The next thing that pops up is asking you what the task is. But notice that this is the screen of Microsoft Planner. It says what the plan is. And with this, it's asking for what the uh, task is that we'd like to, it's a drop down menu. With that drop down menu, it means that we can, at that point, move over to the side and start adding team members. And notice that this is a team member. It allows us to put in the email address of that team member. It's like a lot of our fill in the blank kinds of either email or software that we have. Once we start typing email addresses, whatever email addresses we have access to will start to show up. And so we can end up with something like this where Lisa has shown up and we're having her be a team member. And if we continue on another team member because we are sticking together here is that uh, Denise has been added to the team as how I we, we get a chance to see the profile that are here. We've added these team members. We got all the team members that we're gonna need for this particular project. And this project is, this is a new plan. It could be really anything. If you look over in this column, uh, I also have another project that is there and this is called marketing and design class. So it will, it will keep an annotation of what it is that you're running and be able to do that. Now, when you identify teammates, and bring those team members into your, your, your plan, they will then be notified with an email that basically says, welcome to that new plan that's there. And this is a new plan, so it'll give them the title, it'll give them the opportunity on how to connect up with that. And so oh, they are, you know and they know that they've been added. So once the team is built, it's time to create and to assign some tasks, a beautiful thing. Take those tasks, make sure other people can do them. So inside of adding a task, we are going to go and put in what is it that needs to be done. In this case, this is to create a course summary. And so we just simply type that in. We give it a due date, having a pull down menu. And then we go ahead and we assign as to who might be doing those tasks. And it could be one, it could be many, but we're going to try to choose from those that we've already put on our team. This is a great opportunity. So all three of us have been put in and here's what we've ended up with. We're gonna create a course summary. We have a due date and we have who the members are that have been assigned to complete this task. And there we are, we're done. It's been assigned. We have the date, the folks are there. And so in essence, inside a planner, we have now taken care of assigning one task. Now we can go in and add all these other tasks. We can add all these other components, keep making those assignments and seeing where they are going with that. As we progress, 
we have metrics inside of Planner. They are simple metrics, but at least they give us a sense as to where are we inside of this process. And along with that, we have a schedule that crosses with due dates. So we have a sense as to how are we doing in the schedule? Are we in a place that we can go ahead and accomplish things or do we need to move things along those lines? Now, on a regular basis, those that have been assigned tasks are sent an email. And here's a case, Microsoft Planner, you have upcoming tasks. So there are, there are, are notations that go out, information that goes out, sort of keeps the process going. This piece of software may or may not be useful to you. It is relatively simple. It is free to us. It's commonly available, ties into Teams reasonably well, but it does help us keep on track. There are more complex ones and there are simpler ways. Excel can be used and Microsoft uh, Project Planner can be used. Uh, but the email task notifications are very specific. So inside here, it says it, 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 it gives me a greeting tells me what the projects are that I'm assigned, what's upcoming, what the due dates are, and, and exactly how I am connected into whatever this task is involved in the planning process. Getting started, identify this task, uh, a problem, a situation that needs to be addressed. Second thing is, what method do you wanna use? Is it gonna be paper and pencil? Is it gonna be a planning software or what's gonna happen? What are you most comfortable with? Try something. We have some stuff that's available to us, but again, possibly the most successful thing that you can use is that which you're most comfortable with. Decide who's on the team, decide the due dates, and who's going to do what. Overall, start. Just start, make it happen along those lines. So that's my part of this presentation. And now I give this over to... Great. <clears throat> Up and share. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm just going to take a minute and share my screen with you. Can we um, just, uh, uh, Becky posed a question about, did the deadlines sure. automatically load into your Outlook or can they be loaded? And, and she means the Outlook calendar. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, so I, I, have not, uh, I have not looked into my calendar with that. Suppose there is that connection through 360 that loads it into the calendar, but I have not. I, I use I use a different planning software, but this so I believe it loads straight into it though, or it can be loaded straight into it. It is supposed to, yeah. I just haven't seen it always come up in mine, so definitely okay. something to look out for. But if you're in Planner or Teams, you'll always see the task being um, exactly. and being yep. there. Well, good morning. <clears throat> I'd like to share with you a few things that I have found helpful in administration um, regarding Planner. Um, I used Google Planner um, when I was principal of a Google school, um, but Microsoft Planner is very similar. Uh, so Denise accesses through Teams. I have a different version than Scott. He has the, the latest version. My version is probably similar to what a lot of you have, and I just access it through my waffle on my homepage. And you can see once I get into my uh, planner tool, these are some boards that I have created or projects, project boards, um, that I'd like to just share with you the nuts and bolts of maybe how we can make those boards work. So these are my identified projects. And let's take a look at our accreditation process. So I've created a plan as to how we're going to work our way through the accreditation process. So in creating a new plan, which is where I created this, um, I went in and named it. And you can name it anything you want. And you can even change the background. But I like ACBSP accreditation. These in my board are bucket lists, lists of things to do, buckets of things to do. So they automatically come through as a default, just naming uh, to-do lists, and you can name them whatever you want. I think after I have looked at my work that I've put in this bucket, I think I'm gonna call this pre-work. And I'm just gonna add that title. And I can add tasks at any time. But basically what I did was I went through and just brainstormed the things that are going to need to be done in my pre-work 
for our ACBSP accreditation. So I think I'm going to review the standards. I'm going to have to review all of our SLOs, and then I'm going to have to cross-reference those to ACBSP standards. That's a lot of work. And I'm not sure that I have these in the right order. If not, I can change them and put them in a different order as to what makes sense and what is the most workable for me. But let's start with reviewing the current ACBSC, ACBSP standards. So let's take a look at that. This is my <clears throat> task. I need to assign it to someone. There's all kinds of, this is called in my pre-work bucket. So let's see, who could be best for reviewing? I'm going to assign that to me because this is the team that I have identified and I'm going to assign it to Scott. So Scott and I will receive emails regarding having to do this work. So I have named this bucket. Um, the start date, sure, we'll put um, today. And then when do we want to have this done? I think we want to have this done a week from today. And I've put a note in to Scott, please review the ACBS standards as assigned below. And let's take a look at the ACBS standards. Oh goodness, look what I've done. I've attached the document from ACBSP. So it's ready to be reviewed by anyone who needs to uh, take a look at that document. Now I've decided there's a lot of work there, so <clears throat> I think I'm going to add another person. So I'll add Denise. Now this is a little vague, so maybe I'll add a checklist and say, <clears throat> review standards one through three, and I'm going to assign that to Denise. I'll add another one, um, four through five to Scott. And then I'll do six and seven. So now as Scott gets this email and Denise gets this email, they have all the information they need to be able to complete this task. And as they do it, they can send me messages back or they can just say, oop, done. And hooray for me, I got that done. And when I look on my planning board, it will show that those ACBSP standards, at least the ones that were assigned to me, were done. And if they're not, then I can send Scott or Denise a little reminder email saying, hey, don't forget. But Project Planner is going to send them an email as well. So um, another task that I need to do in my accreditation project is reviewing all of our SLOs. So this is a lot of work and I can't do this all by myself. So I'm gonna ask for help. I'll ask for Denise's help. And what we're gonna do is review those standards. Uh, review those SLOs. Now these are done by, um, may, uh, by program. So, you know, I think I'm going to ask all the program coordinators to review their own SLOs and then get back to me. So I've written that as a note. And then I'm going to assign that to all the program coordinators. Now, a program coordinator, let's say Tom in accounting, is not part of our original team. But I can, I can add Tom because he is a program coordinator for accounting. So I'll just find him in here. Tom will get an email from me. But it's also going to tell me that when I assign Tom, that means Tom can see all the work that we're doing. So if I'm not comfortable with that, then I wouldn't want to do, I wouldn't want to assign Tom. But at this point, I think Tom's great. He can see all the work we're doing for ACBSP. And now he knows that he needs to review the SLOs for his particular, for his particular program. And when Tom does it, if there are attachments, he can, if he has any updates, he can attach them and they'll go to the group, which would be great. And when he's done, he can just cross his name off and I won't bother Tom anymore. So some great tools to be efficient. And then here's another project. There's no way that I 
would be able to cross-reference all of those SLOs to the standards. So again, I'm going to ask for some help and I can ask for help from whomever I feel on the team or as a consultant, one of the staff members or faculty members to come in and help me out. So that's some neat ways of just working through um, what, what um, planner can offer. Um, again, another task that I might need in our ACBSP accreditation is outside collaboration. So um, communicating with ACBSP, that should probably be at the top of my list, but that's not a me project. That is definitely a Scott Manti project. So I'm going to let him know the things that need to be done and he needs to do them, whatever the start date is, and then he can determine when the end date is. And we can all collaborate right on this screen through Planner. So some neat things that you can do. And um, again, charts, it'll tell me who has done what I've asked them to do, where they are in the schedule, and not as a catcher, but as an opportunity for me to say, hey, I see you're you know, struggling a little, how can I help you? So um, those are some plans. Uh, there are lots of opportunities for plans, but I thought I'd share, you, share with you some of those nuts and bolts, just so you'll see how really user-friendly this is, and it's very intuitive. So um, with that, I'll stop sharing and see if anyone has any questions or if Scott or Denise want to um, add to that. Any questions anybody has? I have one more piece that I was gonna share um, in terms of just looking at it from a different perspective. So inside the classroom perspectives, I know we have some faculty members on the, on the Zoom call too. Um, so I can kind of share, um, you know, what that really looks like from my perspective anyways, if I can find it here. Let me share my desktop here. Can you see my, uh, my teams here? There was one question too, as you're getting starting, Denise, about whether you can archive a planner or do you just delete it at the end? Maybe Denise You can the... definitely archive and I have saved them from year to year. So um, for instance, you know, planning the prom um, at a high school, I would just go back from year to year and be like, oh, this is how the process went last year. It was pretty successful. This worked and we can tweak it. We can um, resave it and keep the old one. So it's, it's um, a great tool for archiving. Mm -hmm. So just, um, you know, a little bit of a different perspective in the classroom. So I teach event marketing class uh, on campus. And so basically we tend to execute an event uh, every semester, which can be challenging, um, just given the constraints of the semester and how much time there is between the learning and the doing, right? Um, and what I like to do is have a few students volunteer to be the project managers. And so I really work hard to get them to be the ones um, helping kind of, you know, manage their team. So uh, each class I begin with a team's um, site, what, you know, that we create and we put together. And then when in, in there, we actually put in um, to do's and all our general posts and sort of you can see the different buckets of um, areas that students are working on and we're able to post in there. But the one piece that I wanted to call your attention to is just the to do area right which is linked to planner so everything that we populate into our teams to do area. Um, travels over to people's personal planners as well. So you can see that. But what I like about it is that the project managers, as we're talking and doing our stand up meetings in the class, they can add in all these new uh, tasks that students are saying, I'll take that on, I'll do this, I'll do that. And then, like Lisa was pointing out, then they can go back in and they can upload different attachments of the work that they have done. So what they have produced, and then we can just open it and we can talk about it, um, you know, in the class. And so we have our open to do's, which we never, you know, cleared these out uh, at the end of the semester. This was actually the uh, fall 2000, spring 2020 semester. And then we have a lot of um, completed ones as well. And so they start to shift around uh, and you can have multiple people, like we said, so multiple students sharing those tasks and really being able to input what it is that they're working on. But I find this very helpful. And then we can also carry over and look at those charts 
um, and see where we are. And if a student has, you know, the same to do still hanging out there, the question is, how can we help? Like what's going on with that? Um, why can't we get it to the finish line, right? Uh, and so I think that, you know, this is another way. So if you're doing projects inside of your classrooms, you could consider doing this as well. Other questions? Is anybody using any kind of planning software right now? Anything going on like that? Any project related questions? We can bounce back and forth. So whatever it is that mm -hmm. is kind of on your mind, if you're tackling something coming up or thinking about something. Okay, good. So Rodney says that they're using Teams and Planner extensively in alumni relations, which is good. great. Good. Yeah. Great place to use yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And Marcia's mm -hmm. saying, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is great. <laughs> and Nick. Yeah. So students, yes. So students seem really overwhelmed when you add on technology and how do you deal with that? Yes, some students do. Uh, and so in my classes, I try to keep it simple. So, you know, as simple as we can be, but it's just, yes, we will be using, I say we'll use, you know, Microsoft 365, which you'll be using when you're in the, in the, uh, you know, working world. Uh, and some people will say, right, uh, you know, and I'll use Google Docs and this and that. And don't get me wrong, sometimes students still want to be able to kind of do their own side things and they, some have their Google Docs going still. And then, you know, but I'm like, well, if you do that, right? You need to put your links into Teams and that way there we can still all access it. So I definitely hear you, Nick. Um, I run into that at times too, but once I start to utilize it in class and I'm using it and we're going through and I say, hey, you know, it makes a lot of sense for us to put all our to-dos in here and we can see what everybody's doing. I think the proof is in the pudding when we start to actually showcase how it works and then people are like, oh, I see. I I get it now, like, I guess I should be thinking about doing this. And if you have your project managers sort of helping drive it along and putting it in there, I think people start to realize like, you know, okay, maybe this is something I should do and something you could be utilizing well past Plymouth State University too. Mm -hmm. And Pat, good, yeah. So events is using um, teams and planners for commencement. Yeah. And sometimes it's, um, it's a nice communication tool um, to include someone on a team who you don't really assume that you're going to assign a task to. For instance, um, in, in, in my area, I would include Patty Rice, who's our AOM, not because I'm going to assign something to her, but just because I would like her to be abreast of everything that's going on. So she knows what's happening. If someone... Uh, asks her a question, she's not blindsided, but I may not assign her a task, but I just want her to be in the loop of things that are happening. So it's just a great communication tool um, just to share with important people who um, should be in the loop, but maybe don't have a task. And Marcia, you asked the question, um, do we use it? Um, do I use Teams instead of Moodle? And no, I use them both. So, but I use Moodle as sort of the, I would say the depository in terms of, you know, here, and but I put all the links in there. So at the very top, it's like, here's the link to our teams. And so, you know, we are in there more than we are in Moodle. Moodle is simply housing, um, you know, our textbook links, it's housing, um, probably not even a lot of the client documentation. It might in the beginning, but then we move. So assignments, they would still continue to do inside of Moodle. But in terms of having regular chats and pinging people and things, that's all happening inside of Teams as well as the actual project tracking. So their grades are housed in Moodle, of course. So I kind of separate things out that way. I haven't made the jump. I've thought often about um, taking and putting discussion boards into um, Teams because that's a much simpler, more interesting and active engagement, I think, for students. But if I'm grading them, I haven't made that leap yet. But 
Um, I don't do that for this particular class. Yeah, Moodle is more of a shell, I would say, yeah. Any other um, questions or comments, challenges you're all facing with any of these things? Can I, can I just make a quick statement here? Is so. I think that many times when we when we introduce some sort of software like this or talk about opportunities for developing some efficiencies that it stops here. So I would I would volunteer to collect that if you have interest in trying to learn more about or some some components related to project planning that you send me an email and I collect and try to make a group in teams. And potentially we can share some of the opportunities that we've taken advantage of, some of the software we're using and some things along those lines. So we develop a little bit of a community of project planning, thereby increasing the overall level of knowledge across the university. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. It's a, you know, yeah. project management is tricky and it, uh, you know, there's a lot to it and it's a tough job at times. And so, right. uh, you know, when you're talking about different large projects, so good to have as many resources as you can and different people giving their experience for certain. Thank you folks. Let, let us know what we can do to help out. Please. Mm -hmm. Have a great day. All right. Thank you guys so much. Um, Sophia, if you want to go ahead and stop the recording, that would be great.